And we've learned they don't need to hear anything. They just need you to love them and hug them and say, I'm here for you. That's right. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis because family is everybody's business. We know that's why you are joining us today. Now, you're going to love the podcast crew that's coming to you during this recording. It is myself, my wife, Mary, and my mother, Anna Alessi. Come on, give it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, mom has never been in a podcast booth and recording, so she's uh, a little nervous as we sit here. First off, hopefully you're able to see the merchandise that's sitting on the table in front of me. We've got great merchandise we want you to look into and check out the website and buy some. It's great stocking stuffers and something you can wear. But we're here with mom, and uh, mom, we want to welcome you. Thank you. To the podcast booth. Thank you. Yes. Is this what you thought a podcast was? I figured more or less. <laughs> <laughs> more or less. Mom's 85 years young. This is her sure is. first podcast. Who knows? She may be on more because she's doing uh, uh, life with us from time to time, coming yes. down. You've yes. moved to Stewart. You're about two hours from us, but now you're in town because we're on Baby Watch. Yes, and so yes. since we are all here today at the office, we thought, let's bring you into the podcast booth. So here's what Mary and I are thinking you could add some value to the listeners. You have, uh, since 2020, you've moved into a new season as we lost Papa in September of 2020, or actually October of 2020. And um, you have since moved into this season of your life where you are a widow. Yes. And uh, you've done so for just over three years now. Yes. So people, of course, look at you, they see your strength, but this has been a new season, moving into a new season for you. So uh, first off, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank God for my children. I appreciate what God yeah. has given my children and the grace that they have given toward me, or that God gave them to take care of me, uh, I appreciate that. I have a daughter in California. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter in uh, Stewart, Florida, where I live. Mm -hmm. And I have a beautiful son and daughter here in Miami, yep. and my own bedroom. Yep. I will share that bedroom with Faith, <laughs> your mother, my mother, when she comes down, and she will. She'll be here too, to see the baby when it's born. Yep. Um, it's been um, difficult. Without my children, I don't know where, how I would have handled all this. Sure. But because my children rose to the level that God wanted them to rise to, yeah. um, it has made me, it made it easier for me. I also, when I, when they came in and told me that my husband had passed away, in the hospital yep. from COVID, I fell apart. And then, of course, when I went into my bedroom, I realized I could not do this. I believe God. Yeah. I believe God has a purpose for our lives. I believe that all things work together to good right. to those that are called. I'm a called out one. Right. You two are. You that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You're called out. Your your name is written in glory. Yes. And therefore, if I believed what the Word of God said, I had to get a hold of myself. Mm. All the time that Dad was in the hospital, yep. we kept saying, because we all cried, and, and, and it was very traumatic for us, for a man as healthy and as robust mm -hmm. as Pastor John was, um, all of a sudden he's gone. Yeah. yeah. And we, it was hard for us to comprehend. And consequently, we all stood upon the word of God that we knew that God would not allow anything to happen to him that God had not ordained it yes. to be. Yes. Yes. And if this is what God had, mm -hmm. then we must be subservient and we must accept that. 
And that was our philosophy, and that was my philosophy. I've yes. stood on that. Yes. I stood on the Word of God, yes. Yes, and I did. tried to tell the family, God knew what the future held. We did not. We did not know what the future held. Right. But God, in His infancy, in His in His divine glory, God knew what the future would hold for Him. Yeah. And my husband was such that uh, he ne- never wanted anybody to try to help him. Yeah. I at least <laughs> I uh, I uh, appreciate the help that I get. Yeah. But he didn't want anybody helping him walk. He didn't want anybody helping him get up. He didn't want any of that. He was really strong with that. Well, I had to also then tell my my children that we must still look to the Lord, and God has a purpose for this. I still haven't seen the purpose yet, except <laughs> for the fact that my children are all all close, and we're surrounded but with one another. Yes. Uh, some of you out there perhaps don't you do not have the uh, the. Am I talking too much? No, you not doing at all. good. I'll catch you. You're doing good. The support system around you. The, so perhaps you don't have the support system yeah. that um, I had and they had. Uh, Pastor Stephen and Mary had the church here, yes. mm-hmm. the church in Doral, uh, and the church in Dadeland, and all of them, everybody just drew together yeah. to support us, undergird us with the right right hand of the God the Father. Yeah. And... Um, I would go into my bedroom at night. I didn't want to cry around them. I didn't want them to think that I didn't have the faith to believe Mm -hmm. that God did what he did, took my husband, um, was the enemy that took him, but it was God that sustained us. And so I I would cry many a night that I did not want them knowing that I was crying and grieving. Mm -hmm. But Believe me when I say that as we trust God, the Lord just opens up people to come to us and share things with us to uplift us. Yes. Yeah. And I understand that you're going to have a, a, what do we call it? What did you call it, son, for here for the widows? Oh, yeah, the grief. The, the grief, grief and loss mm-hmm. uh, program. Grief yes. and loss program. Right. I admonish every one of you that have lost a loved one whether it be a husband or a spouse, uh, children, I admonish you in the name of the Lord to find out about that and come out because you can be ministered to. Uh, It's not just as a pastor's wife for uh, so many 50, 60 years, as, as a pastor's wife, when my mother died and even when Pastor John passed away, People would come over to me and say, try to give me words of encouragement, try to quote scripture to me. Well, I had been in the ministry since I was 16 years old, and and I'm 85 now. And I knew all those scriptures. I had given scriptures like that to to women and men. I didn't want to hear that. I just wanted my heart to heal. And so with this grief uh, ministry that is starting, I admonish you to get into it, get involved, yeah. allow the Holy Spirit to come in and wave over you. Just send that beautiful Holy Spirit uh, presence over you that you then can look up to the Lord and say, give me the strength to say thy will be done. Thy will be done in my life, in my children's lives. Let me accept this, Lord. And God will put the peace of God into your heart. If he will just saturate your life in the name of Jesus, he will saturate your life until you can say, I can handle this now. Is it going to be overnight? No. No, it will not be overnight. But Lauren, that is heading this up, she will be able to give you clinical uh, ideas, mm-hmm. clinical thoughts. No one gave me those clinical thoughts. It was only the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit of God that came upon me when I would pray. Did I miss my husband? Oh, yes, I miss my husband. I miss him today. As I passed by the the, the work on the uh, Dayland campus, and there was that big, big uh, 
thing that he's got across there. Banner. Big banner, big banner yeah. thank mm-hmm. you. Banner that's across there. On one side is Pastor Steve, then the beautiful edifice that's been drawn. And there was my husband up there, so skinny, (laughs) 27 years old. And yet he was there with his tools, just so happy to be able to uh, build the church and build the, the chapel at that time. So happy. And now he's gone, but he's in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And he's looking out for us. Yeah. He still gives me thoughts. He still gives Pastor Steve thoughts yeah. that all of a sudden will pop out of nowhere. Yeah. But allow the Holy Spirit to come in. It's been three years now, as I've said before. And it's easier and easier. Yeah. yeah. God will give you the strength. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yes, he That's will. beautiful, Mom. And, you know, there's Tissue. something to be said about that. Mary's giving Thank you. you. Yep. Tissue. <laughs> if you know my mom, you know she's a crier. Right. So that's a good thing. And if you're not watching and you're listening, there's some tears already flowing. So you may want to go back and watch this. But mom, yes. you know, we're trying to look at the different seasons of life and uh, your life, of course, with dad, almost 60 years of, of ministry, you and him together. Um, and yes, he was the kind of guy that would take care of everything for you. He really did. He treated you well. And you didn't have to worry about things around the house. He was going to take care of them. You didn't have to worry about the cars. You didn't have to worry about the money. You didn't have to worry about those things. Because dad was, uh, that that was just what dad was about. So now you've come into this new season. And with every new season, there are some adjustments that need to be made. So, you know, you probably dealt with fear Mm -hmm. after Pop's passed. How did you deal with fear? I guess it was just the Holy Spirit, Steve, that uh, helped me. First of all, uh, the fear that I had, I would call you and and ask you, for instance, the smallest thing like insurance. I never took care of anything like that. I just paid the regular bills. Right. And Dad took care of all the rest. Yeah. And I didn't know the first thing. I had to call you and ask you for an insurance person to call. Mm -hmm. So the fear was there, but I just felt the peace of God let me know that you're going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Pastor Steve took care of so much. Uh, Darlene and Stuart took care of so much for me. Uh, And and all the family, just whatever I needed, you were all there for me. And I feel sad that some of our widows out there don't have that. And I almost feel guilty to tell you that my family just encircled me and and took care of all those things for me that I couldn't take care of myself. Yeah. So you more or less had to just trust God. Yes. That the bottom line was trusting God. Yeah. When we were at the house the other night and Lauren had come home and we were talking about the the course that she is hosting for the widows, we were just all so surprised and stunned because she hadn't really talked about it. But one of the newer widows in our church whose husband suddenly um, went out for a walk and had a heart attack and died on the street right in their neighborhood. And it was tragic for our whole church. Our whole church felt that one. And she'd approached Lauren and said... Connect groups are great, but I think some of our widows aren't ready for that environment. And we need something that really is going to help us heal, like you said, clinically. And as we were talking about it, that's when you started sharing from your own personal perspective as to what you're feeling when you've lost somebody and the things you need to hear and the things you don't need to hear. And for the first time, and I, I mean, we've, we've, we've been to many funerals in ministry. You've been to twice as many over the years. Um, we've been in, in grief settings where what do you say? What is the right thing to say? How do you act? What is, you know, what do people need to hear? And we've learned they don't need to hear anything. They just need you to love them and hug them and say, I'm here for you. That's right. And you made a statement that night at the house. You said, I already knew that God would take care of it. I already knew that. I didn't want to hear that again. Not that you were angry at God or that that didn't bring you solace. That was something you knew. You were in a land that was unknown to you for the first time. And it was so um, 
eye-opening for me, who I, I know more than most people how to behave in a grief environment, but it was still very eye-opening to hear you say that from somebody who, you know, we all have gleaned from. And we look at you as the a mountain of wisdom and, you know, the Mecca for, for ministry and understanding. And for you to say in that moment, I just didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Knowing your heart, it made us even more start to understand the heart of somebody who's grieving. And the holidays, how hard are the holidays for somebody who's lost a loved one? They're, they're very hard because you start remembering back to the things that you used to do together. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything was together. I mean, Dad and I were married 65, 66 years. And all of a sudden, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, at night, and I'm sure some of our widows have felt the same thing uh, at night. Um, I thought I would feel him in the bed, and he wasn't there. I'd reach over, and he wasn't there. So holiday time, uh, I still, we always went with Pastor Steve and Mary for Thanksgiving, and Christmas with Darlene and Debbie, and and all of a sudden, he's not there. So I'm not going to quit going with right. Steve and Mary for Thanksgiving, right. neither am I going to have a, not going to have a wonderful time for mm -hmm. Christmas. Right. I mean, the most beautiful, that and Easter, yeah. the day he was born, celebrating the day he was born, Jesus. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. then culminating with him rising from the grave at Easter time right. so that we could live and right. live forever. That's right. Because we've accept, we had accepted Christ. Yes. So I wasn't going to change any of that. I didn't want to. Right. I said, with the grace of God, uh, we'll go through it. And then I still have my family surrounding yeah. me and supporting me. Right. And so that's how I got through. Not that they would say, come on, let's read the Bible, Mom. No. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to think of the good things. Yes, yes. There is not a day that goes by now that healing has taken place. There's not a day that goes by that one of my children or grandchildren does not mention my husband's name. Right. Grandpa. Yeah. Papa. Yeah. Papa. And we get through the day that way. And it's a we laugh. We laugh at some of the antics. And that's <laughs> laughing was good for the soul. Yes. And we we never forgot him. He will never be forgotten. No. He will always be remembered in our heart, but it'll be with joy. That's right. That's Even right. most of the restaurants we go to, they, they, they don't forget him. Yeah. For, for good or bad. He yes. made a mark, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> he left us with a lot to talk about. Yes. Yeah. A lot of good memories. Yeah. Well, we, we see it more and more, just so many people struggling with those seasons, and especially with loss and, of course, um, People outside of a relationship with God, we wonder how in the world do they do it? Yeah. Because they, you, when you're in that deep, darkest moments where you feel fear, you feel um, rejected, you feel like, man, the heavens are like brass. If there's God up there, how could He allow such a thing happen? But, Mom, you uh, you demonstrated a strength that uh, you didn't realize. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Uh, but your grandkids have been watching. Yes. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, all of your grandkids watching the way that you handled this uh, really spoke to them because they, I mean, losing Papa was tough. Uh, of course, it's a little different. He he wasn't with them as long as he was with you. He wasn't their father like he was me and Debbie and Darlene's father. But they had a precious relationship with him, enjoyed their times with them. Each of them can give you more or less their own stories. But watching you navigate through that, not fall apart, not be weak, uh, weepy, but be strong, and that really spoke to them. So, you know, with, with the day in which we live in, that family unit is so important to helping Yes, it is. Uh, you get through things, and being surrounded with the right kind of community just is so important. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just important for you. It's important for your your sons and daughters mm -hmm. and also your grandchildren yep. to see 
if you say you serve the Lord, yep. then walk in that. Yeah. Walk in it mm-hmm. and know that he's the provider of all things. Yeah. 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 I, I want to say this, that we, we all made a com We would all discuss it to, around the season that it was so new and fresh that you, you know, you have always taught us so many things, how to love the Lord. You've taught us ministry. Um, it's, it's endless what you've taught us as the mother in our life. But one of the things that we talked about, my kids, your grandchildren, was that you showed us how to grieve the godly way. Oh, thank you, Mary. And you kept saying this, and I'll never forget it, because we, and we've said it since then, that the day of the funeral, we were getting ready to walk out, and you said, today, uh, we are going to grieve. As a family, we're going to grieve. But tomorrow, the sun is coming up, and we will find joy tomorrow. Mm. And we walked out as a family. I mean, all of us is this big entourage of family, and you let us know, this is what we're going to do. What a matriarchal thing to do. And it's not that you weren't feeling weak. It wasn't that you didn't have all the normal female uh, and emotional um, experiences that all of us have when we grieve. It wasn't like any of that was void or lost on you. You were feeling all those things, but you were taking God at his word, but everything you said you believed, you were now grabbing hold of and walking out. And we got to see what that looked like. The example for us and your grandchildren was, if, God forbid, it ever would have happened yes. to us in the future, it's an example of how to grieve the godly way. And you you lean on your family because your family needs you, and you need your family. You turn to your church because sometimes, you know, we God is always present. He's near and dear to the brokenhearted, but, but we need people in our lives too and people who've been through it and have walked through it that just know how not to say a word, but they understand the pain because they've been there before. But they're also an example to you that healing's in your future. Yes, praise God. And joy, again, is in your future. And happiness and laughing and actually enjoying your life is in your future. It's just not right now. Right. But you can stop and take the time to let your life heal, your heart heal, your body heal. And you really did um, exemplify what healthy, and, and Lauren would say this as somebody in psychology and Christopher too, not just godly grief, but um, the grief that you would be, um, if you were in a counselor's office or a psychiatrist's office, yeah. what they would tell you you needed to do in order to stay healthy yes. if, and have the right mind about you in order for you to heal, you did exemplify that. I didn't like looking around and seeing every time we got together. My grandchildren crying. Yes. And then we adults started to tear up. And that's when I said, no, this is not happening again. And that's when I said, we're going to cry today. Yeah. We're really going to cry. That's right. But this is the last time we're crying. When we leave here, (laughs) we're going to wake up in the morning and there's going to be joy. Yes. Because the word of God says, weeping. Endures for the night. For the night. But But joy joy comes in the morning. That's right. And that's what I wanted my Mm. grandchildren and my family, all my family to feel. And they did. They did. They they got permission to do that. That's right. And they could only get that permission from you. If I didn't cry and weep every time they saw me. That's right. And, you know, I I know it's kind of um, harsh to to say, but it's a reality. Death is a part of life. Yes. That's right. And we're all going to meet our maker one day, and we're going to lose loved ones, some tragically, some uh, through just the natural means of age and what happens. We can't live forever. So uh, loss is a part of living. Death is a part of life. So we have to uh, give ourselves room, yes, to grieve. That was, right. that was sad. But yet there, there is that tomorrow. There, there is now we got to move on because like you did, Mom, you realized, okay, you still got you still have life ahead of you. Absolutely. You've got your kids you're still enjoying, your grandkids. Now you're seeing your great-grandkids yes, yes. come on the scene. You're healthy enough to embrace them and see them. You still travel. You go out to see Debbie in California. Um, all of those things are still a part of your life. So you can't stop living when there is a death and a loss 
you you still have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and life's different. It's a new season. It's not going to be the same, but but you move on. Yes. And a year, you know, after the passing of dad to the date, we were able to come back and as much as we would try to stop by and go see dad's grave on a regular basis, partly because we missed him, partly because of guilt, like, oh my gosh, he would he would be upset with us if we didn't stop by his <laughs> grave to check on <laughs> him Because he so arranged often. the whole setup oh, for sure us to be able he to sure easily visit him. <laughs> but a, a year to the date after his death, we were able to name the street in front of the church That's after right. him. Yes, that was a beautiful testimony. Yep. So I see, we see his name still every time we drive down yeah. the street. We're in the church that he built. Yes. Yes, we were able to take that over and um, uh, put our campus, one of our campuses there. Uh, so even when we're going through this remodel project, almost $4 million, I'm looking at him thinking, wow, there's there's things here that happened in this building that dad would have been on top of and seeing. And of course, the guys joke because they know so much of what we are doing he would not have been happy with. You can't move that. You can't change that. You can't rebuild that. You can't paint that. There would have been a lot of that going on if he was still around. So the point there is, you know, we go on without him, but yet he's always present. He's yeah, always, always present. That's a good thing. Yes. And uh, that's part of who we are. I mean, if you're you're talking about soul ties, there's no side soul tie t- tied more together than that between a husband and wife and then between um, a, a parent and a child. No. Yes. Because exactly literally right. coming out of the womb, the parent created. So we never forget him. And he's always speaking at one time or another, seeing things. Some of, some of us have had great dreams. Yes. yes. Where it's like uh, he just walked in and, hey, I'm good. Yes, yeah. he did that too. Yes. Yeah. So, so you lose him. But what's the alternative? We got to continue to live, and that's the inspiration here, Mom. Because even your church family, so many of them, they knew, uh, especially from the Dade Lane campus, that were with you and Dad for so long. They knew what a imposing figure, strong figure, Dad was. But then to see you continue on and uh, uh, do your life like you're doing uh, is done well. It's really been inspiring, and. I think something that helped you tremendously, which maybe we can encourage for everybody who has a loss, you didn't make a lot of changes right away. Oh, I definitely did not. I had determined that I would not sell my house, even though it was so big and so costly to keep up. But I would not sell my house until after a year when I would start to think about it. Right. Yeah. Then I would start to think about That's it. That's right. And only then to think about it. Smart. Thank God he got us a new car before he passed he away. He drove it one time. And he drove it one time, yes, before he passed. But if he hadn't have gotten us a new car, I might have still been driving around in that old no, Lincoln. No. That's true. <laughs> no, we no Pastor Steve would have made sure. Taken care of, <laughs> no doubt. And he left you well off financially. Yes, Thankfully, he did. Thank you were God. able to be taken care of. Yes. You didn't have to get remarried. I didn't have to go back daddy. to work. I see people working that's that's older, and I say, "Yeah, you're right." I say, Thank you, Jesus, yeah. that I don't have to do that. That but I don't do have work. to be a waitress. Oh, I do. You got a job with Metro? I was going to yes, say, yes, yes. What yes. Do you do you're doing it right now. She's on the clock. What yeah. do you do for Metro? <laughs> what do you do for Metro? What's your job responsibility? I write out Christ- uh, birthday cards. That's right. Every month. You That's should right. get be getting my birthday card. Yeah. This this month though has been a little Slow. slack. Yeah, we kept her only busy. because I've been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> he he and Mary have kept me so busy <laughs> yes. that it takes me several days to rest up and then I don't feel like going in <laughs> and writing my cards out. So please forgive me. <laughs> well, we did that because I remember one day you saying to me, Oh, my handwriting isn't like it used to That's be. That's right. That's well, right. you were so accustomed to Te- sending texts, whereas before, uh, years ago, you were a legal secretary, yes. so you were a whiz on a typewriter, even with your, uh, yes. dis- uh, your disabled hand that's a little dis- disabled. But uh, you, so you weren't doing that, but you said, oh, my handwriting's slipping. And I went home, I told Mary, uh, we're going to have to work on mom using left and right brain, so she can't <laughs> just use her f- hands for texting anymore. I'm going to give her a job. And I remember having our staff retreat, and when we were getting ready for the beginning of the year, I said, by the way, y'all, we have a new employee that's that's starting at the beginning of the year. 
And they're like, oh, they got all excited and questionable with their eyes. Who? I said, Pastor Ann Alessi. She's coming on staff. <laughs> so they all thought that was adorable. So, so you are busy. Yes, you're yes. doing something. It's not as though you're vegging out. No, I'm not vegging out. No. My children keep me very busy. That is right. good. You've remodeled your place. <laughs> yes. And Stuart, Darlene, really <clears throat> took care of that with you. But it put you out for a little bit. Yes. Because... You had to put up with that whole remodel. You did finally sell your home. I did. That was a big deal. In this to move past away. June, this mm-hmm. past that. So for two and a half years, I stayed in the house. That's right, which is smart. Yeah. They usually say three years. Three is a good number for any kind of adjustment and change. It takes you a good year just to realize the new. Then it takes you another year to kind of figure your way out what you're going to do next. And then within that third year, that's when changes take place. So I was right there. You were right there, mom. Okay. That was that was good. So you're you've landed on your feet. You took a fall, but you've landed on your feet and you have um more seemingly more energy. I do. I have a lot of a lot of energy. Your hobby is what? Um just going around from house to house. No, and... you like to read. Oh I love reading. Oh yeah. yes. And I get to do more of that because Papa didn't. He didn't like that. No, he, he wanted my my his under my undivided attention. And he wanted to go to TJ Maxx and all yes, he liked stuff. to shop. Yes, yeah. and I just I just love uh, reading a good novel. Yep. So you you pretty much do that every day. Get yes. into your reading. Yes. Your Bible and then your novel. Yes. Uh, and uh, she's had what three or four more great grandchildren in the last year and a half. Yeah. She's yeah. had four more in the last 18 months. Yes. Yeah. Gianna, um, Daniel's third baby. Marino. Then Marino and Matthew coming. Yeah, we'll have six this Christmas. Yeah. And um, when Papa passed away, yeah. we only had one wow. great grandchild. That's right. And that was Rome. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So life goes on. You're here to tell people, hey, it hurts. Life sucks sometimes. It gets really hard. But you have to do, as the one old preacher said, you've got to endure the manure. Yeah. And ah. as you do, hang in there. Things could get better again. They will get better again if you handle it right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I like that joy comes in the morning and yeah. it has come into my life. Amen. Like I said with the other brand new great yeah. grandchildren, uh, you know, God is good. Yeah. God is. is good. And don't that, let Satan ever tell you no. that he's not. That's it. Dad would be 88 because he, he passed be, away at 85. Yes, he would have been 80. Uh, 88. 88. Boy, he would have been a tough 88-year-old. Yes, he would have. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been walking a little slower, which would have frustrated him because oh, he loved how- being healthy. Remember how aggravated he got because he would go to uh, Dayland and couldn't walk but a couldn't, few steps and then had to that. stop, and he hated it. And as much as we hated to lose him, we had great, great years. Yes, yes, we, we did. We would not want to have seen him lose his dignity and no. going downhill, anything like that, losing his strength. He, If he couldn't walk to the beach to lay out in his Speedos, he would have been so frustrated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mom, we're glad you joined us on the Alessi family business, the family business with the Alessi. So you are an official podcaster as of today, and I can't wait to tell my sisters that. Thanks so much for <laughs> Introducing me you to come. new things in life, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of the family business with the Alessis, yes. because family is everybody's business. We're so glad you joined us. If you like this, subscribe, pass it on to somebody that you may know is going through a seasonal change or even have lost a loved one and is having a hard time, pass this on. Maybe it'll be an encouragement to them. So thank you so much for joining us. God bless. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and click on the notifications bell so you can be notified for all of our future videos. And if you love today's topic, we have plenty more. And you can click on this link right here to watch all of our videos so you can learn why family is everybody's business.